So this week uh, we are talking about uh, joint moments of random vectors and their variations like uh, correlation, covariance, and related to these, we have the correlation coefficient to discuss. And also we will generate, uh, to generalize this to uh, more than two dimensions uh, through correlation covariance matrices. And then we will uh, discuss uh, the Gaussian distribution. Well, it, it's a very useful uh, and uh, very, very widely used distribution. So we are going to pay special attention to it. We are going to discuss its bivariate and multivariate uh, joint distributions and uh, also some special properties like uh, uncorrelated Gaussians have. Okay, to start with, we will define the mean vector. If you remember, we have the expected value of a random variable, which we also call the mean of a random variable. And when you talk about the random uh, vector instead of a random variable, now we have the mean vector. But it's nothing but the generalization of the mean of a random variable. This is a, again a column vector, um, mean vector of random vector x. Um, it's, it's a column vector and essentially its components are the mean of each component. Remember each component of a random vector is by itself a random variable. So the mean value of each of these random variables constitute this mean vector. And of course the definition is uh, easy to give in the discrete case you have uh, essentially, the uh, let's say this this is the uh, mean of the component x sub i. To compute that, uh, assume that you have this uh, joint distribution. You just multiply it by x sub i and compute the sum over all possible values this vector parameter can take. Okay, so there are n summations here, and very similarly for the continuous distribution case, you have the joint PDF here. And again, you have an n-fold integration and you multiply x sub i, uh, the component for which you would like to compute the mean by uh, the joint PDF and then take the integral to obtain each of these uh, components and then you obtain the mean vector. Let's do a very simple example. If you recall the distribution from uh, the example last week, we have this joint distribution given to us. And from this, we had computed the uh, joint, uh, sorry, the marginal distributions as given in the figure. And of course, here we are going to compute the mean vector. Uh, to compute the, the mean vector, I'm going to compute the uh, expected value of each of these components. Now you can do this if you have the marginals, of course, you can compute them through these marginals uh, to obtain these values. But you don't need to compute the marginals if you have the joint to compute the moments. You just, what, what you need to do is, well, um, for each possible outcome, you multiply the probability of the outcome uh, by uh, the component here, for instance, to compute the mean of x1. Here for this, uh, well, we have here um, 0, 2, and 0, 5. So, x1 in this case is zero. So I'll just multiply zero by the sum of these two. And then here I have one, two and one, five. So x1 is one here. And I'm going to multiply one by the sum of these two outcomes, the probability of the two outcomes. And then I have here four, two and four, five in which x1 is four. So multiply four by the sum of these probabilities. Again, you get 1.5 as expected because you see these sums already correspond to the marginal distribution anyway. So it's exactly the same thing. Very similar with, with the other component um, for x2 equals two, you have these three outcomes. So add them up uh, and then for the outcome of five for the second component, you have again these three outcomes and you compute the result uh, as such. As expected, it should be the same uh, with the mean values you compute from either of these marginal distributions. Now, this was how to compute the mean vector. Uh, to generalize the mean vector, we can define joint moments. Um, well, here we have uh, just uh, not a vector, but well, one single expectation. But in general, 
this is a joint moment of random uh, variables x1 and x2. x1 to the power of j, x2 to the power of k. Essentially, you are computing the expected value of their product. Um, and the definition is given here. The only difference from the computation of the mean is instead of x components here, you have the x1 to the power j, x2 to the power k here, similar with continuous distributions. And of course, when k equals zero, you see, when you set k equals to zero, you get the moments of x1. So if you set j equals one, k equals zero, you get uh, the mean value of x1. If you set j equals two, k equals zero, you get the second moment of x1 and so on. If you set j equals zero and k equals two, you get the second moment of x2 and so on, okay? And then again, we can generalize this even more if you have more than two random variables or more than two uh, components of the random vector you are working with. Here you would have, uh, again, x1 to the power i1, x2 to the power i2, etc., up to xn to the power i sub n, multiplied by either the joint PMF in the discrete case or the joint PDF in the continuous case, and you, well, add them up or integrate. 